Hello everyone! Welcome to another exciting end of the year vlog. <sighs> if you've seen my last couple vlogs, you should know by now what this is about. And usually, almost al almost always, almost every year, I discuss my top 10 albums of the year. And so for this one, we're going to be going into the top 10 albums of 2022. <clears throat> now, a lot has changed since the last vlog that I did. You know, for example, um... I finally started ponytailing my hair, so do not assume that I got a haircut. And also, if you notice the background, I uh, recently relocated. I've got my own space. I've got plenty of space to do stuff like this. You know, plenty of space for future projects, future vlogs, so and so. So, without further ado, let us begin. Number 10, Keep On Smiling by Two Door Cinema Club. So, it's very obvious that over the over the last couple years, over the over the years in general, Two Door Cinema Club's popularity has dropped a little bit, and I think it does go for effect. I, I think it goes without saying that yeah, they they're not as popular as their first two albums. I mean, personally, I still think they make good music. And, you know, that's up for debate as well. But personally, I think Keep On Smiling is very upbeat, even if it even if it doesn't recapture the lyrical and, I guess, musically, um, the lyrical and musical spirits of what they had in the beginning. But to tell you the truth, I was very on board when Wonderful Life dropped. I was really on board when Lucky dropped. I was very, I, I was a big fan of those singles. And then I go and listen to the album. And not to say that it was a mixed bag because, you know, songs like Millionaire, Everybody's Cool, Blue Light, those are probably my favorite non singles. The rest of the album, however, doesn't necessarily capture my attention like the previous albums did. I say previous albums, even though, you know, Tourist History. Beacon, every single song on those records, every single song on both records, you know, captured my attention. I was hooked instantly. I can't say the same for Keep On Smiling, but it does not take it does not take away from you know the positive energy that the album has. Obviously, the very relevant lyrics that each song comes with. So, while it's not their best work, I do still think it's a good listen. If you're a big Two Door Cinema Club fan, if you enjoy dance punk indie things like that, yes, please give please give this album a listen because it's very upbeat, it's very joyous, and I sincerely hope they just keep bringing on the good the good stuff, the goods, because even this far into their career, even without the immense popularity that they started off with i still think this band has potential so yeah that's my number 10 entry keep on smiling by two door cinema club number nine the end so far slipknot okay so first couple singles and i say first couple because there was only three singles that came out before the album one which came out almost a year before the album dropped the chapel town rag I was so hooked on Chapel Town Rag. I cannot even begin to express my excitement for whatever future material they had cooked up following the not so distant release of We Are Not Your Kind. And I thought, wow, this is very reminiscent of Iowa. Of course, you're never gonna have that same anger, that same energy. Corey Taylor is never gonna have the same vocal aggression that was very clearly displayed on Iowa. But I personally think um, on on the Chapel Town rag that we're probably gonna we, we we were probably gonna get something close to Iowa in this album, and I mean you know when a band says that they re they released like their heaviest shit yet, I don't <laughs> I don't necessarily buy into it because every band that says this is our heaviest material yet nine times out of ten it's not it's it's a marketing ploy to get you excited. Sometimes it works, 
and then sometimes you know it leaves people with doubts so <laughs> not everyone's gonna be hooked on it but personally i was like okay i'll bite because you know this is one of my favorite bands of all time i i need to give this a shot so the dying song time to sing i'm pretty sure that's what it was called that drops it was good it was great very a, a much more technical approach especially on jay's drumming yen drops everyone calls it a fucking stone sour song but the minute i heard the turntable the turntable mixing i was like god damn this is good so then the album drops everybody is just very everybody's just questioning the the the, the first song on the album um, Adderall, which everybody was expecting that to be, you know, what, how I guess Adderall feels when you take it, but personally, I enjoyed it. I love the very slow, very slowly upbeat, very melodic, this might be contradictory to the rest of the album, but peaceful, it was, very, for me, it feels very peaceful, and listening to it, I'm like, I kind of like this, I can't bullshit you, this is not a bad song. It's not what what I would expect from Slipknot, but I still enjoy it. I, I like this. And then it takes you straight, and then... Well, it doesn't take you straight into it. Then the rest of the album, for the most part, hits you like a fucking freight train. Because, you know, you have the Chapel Town rag, the Dying Song, Yen. All of those just hit you like a train. And then it just keeps fucking going when you hear um, Hive Mind. Oh my gosh. If you guys knew... How many fucking times I've listened to Hive Mind? You would think I have a problem. Hive Mind, look, not even bullshitting you. I personally think Hive Mind is probably the closest we'll get to modern Iowa. Not Iowa, the fucking state. <laughs> the state wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Slipknot. So there you have it. The rest of the the rest of the album following is very hit or miss. Some good songs, some songs that don't stick as well. Some songs that, you know, people assume... Oh, man. Corey Taylor's in, in putting too much Stone Sour. <laughs> but it does close the same way it ended. Not too heavy. Very slow, very slowly upbeat. It does give a sense of closure to this chapter of their life. And, you know, by this chapter of their life, I mean the time that they've spent with Roadrunner. Because this is their last album with Roadrunner. And so... Yeah, this is the end of their Roadrunner era. Um, I'm very excited to see what they have next. It may be a filler album, but it's a good filler album. So, number nine, the end so far, Slipknot. Number eight, Fury, Upon a Burning Body. So you remember when I said earlier that when bands say this is the heaviest shit we've ever written, it's most of, it's most, most of the time failing marketing ploy? I do not recall Upon a Burning Body ever saying this because I, my memory's been shit as of late. But also, we must consider that, you know, they don't have the same reach as they did when they signed with Sumerian. And, I mean, they're with Seek and Strike now. I, uh, it's very up for debate on whether what they've put out with Seek and Strike is good or not. That's entirely up for you guys to decide. Fury is such a good callback to their early material. They really bring the deathcore vibes back. And that's, that's probably my favorite thing about Fury. I can't tell you how many times I've played Fury. When I heard Snake Eyes, I thought, ah, okay, maybe they're going a little too radio Southern rock, Southern metal. A new responsibility dropped and I was like, oh, I'm fucking sold. Oh my God, this is so reminiscent of Red, White, Green, The World Is Ours. I wasn't really big on The World Is Ours, but I fucking love Red, White, Green. And I thought, man, they, it, it cannot get much better than this. So the album drops, Clarity, Code of Honor, and especially my favorite closing track, probably of all time, Humbling My Skin. Oh my gosh, dude, the breakdown in Humbling My Skin. And then it's followed up by a very sick guitar solo. Oh my gosh, this is probably the greatest way to close a, ret a return to form album. Not even exaggerating, like this is probably the best way to do it. And I think Upon a Burning Body put so many of the bands that have been coming out, have been trying to keep their form, have been trying to return to form. I think they put them on to shame, most of them. I'll get to that later. But this is such a perfect return to form. I, 
I'm probably gonna play this album a lot more. And even though I missed their recent tour, I will make it a plan to attend the next one. So, Fury, Upon a Burning Body, number eight entry. Number seven, Ego Trip by Papa Roach. Holy shit, new Papa Roach album on the list. Well, yeah, because I fucking love Papa Roach. I even have Papa Roach tattoo. I was very skeptical just because when Swerve with Fever 333 and Swaco, I think that's how you pronounce it, I was on board. No, 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 I was not on board. I was skeptical because I thought, uh, a little too reminiscent of Infest. I mean, Jacoby raps in so many of Papa Roach's songs, it's kind of redundant to say that it's reminiscent. But... I did like that Fever 333 was on it because that's another cool band that's coming up. I think it was okay. The, the saxophone um, the saxophone part in the song was... It was great. <laughs> it was enjoyable. I wouldn't call it great. I, it was enjoyable. I'm contradicting myself a lot in this video, but who cares? So I was skeptical and then Kill the Noise dropped and I said, wow, this is good. This even has a great breakdown, which is... <laughs> Not like me to say for a Papa Roach song, but and then the rest of the album comes out. I loved it. No apologies. Ugh. Dying to live? No, dying to believe. Dying to believe. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times I played that song. But me being a pop, me being a big Papa Roach fan, it's I've probably played it a lot. Unfortunately, Amazon Music and my Samsung Music app do not keep track of how many times I've played a song. Or maybe they do. I gotta look back at that. But yeah. You know, some people might disagree that Ego Trip's not the Papa Roach album they wanted. I don't give a fuck. I love this album. It's great. I think it's a very well balanced. It's, I think it's very well balanced between old old material, new material. Like, yeah, you know, they've been changing it up over the last few years. But I think it's good. I know this is good. But yeah, uh, number seven, Ego Trip, Papa Roach. Number six, Dark Sun, Dayseeker. Woo! So, I finally caved in, bought in a Dayseeker, because, I mean, I saw them with Wage War three years ago. I saw them again with Bad Omens on the Concrete Jungle Tour, both times. Did not disappoint. I should have got into them the first time I saw them, but eh, I kind of lost track. And then after this second time that I saw them, I was like, yeah, I should probably start listening to them. I listened to Dark Sun. It is not the sound they started with. It is not what most metalcore listeners, you know, OG Day Seeker fans would expect when listening to this album. But honestly, I think the change is for the better. I do very much appreciate that Roby Rodriguez um, dedicated this album to his, to his late father. It's a very, very sweet letter to him. And as far as the sound goes, like Neon Grave, Dream State, absolutely untouchable singles, especially also, you know, without me crying when you're dancing. This album does make me sad, but for good reason. I do feel a lot of emotions when I listen to the song and not to knock Dayseeker because I never would. If you expect this, if you expect bands to forever remain as they did when they started, a lot of them don't want to. A lot of them could, but you never hear about them again. <laughs> and it's not to say that they did this to, you know, put themselves out there. I mean, you know, Sleep Talk was great. They, they kind of, for the most part, kept their sound. But, you know, it, it really skyrocketed their popularity, at least for what it could at the time. Dark Sun, however, it was very apparent they didn't care. It was very apparent that Rory wanted to make it known to the world that you know, his father was a great man. Was, he, he had a great relationship with him. And just listening to it, it does make me think about, you know, the relationship I've had with my family, which has been great over the last couple of years. But Dark Sun just constantly reminds me that um, I need to keep those relationships afloat while we're all still here. Favorite tracks? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I can't list it. I'm just going to put the whole fucking album. The title track. Oh, I normally don't listen to Synth Wave, but listening to this, I was like, no fucking way. Homesick, Afterglow, um, the fucking song they did with Spencer Stewart. If you guys remember my vlog last year, um, Ban Camino was in my top five. Spencer Stewart. Oh my God. Him and Rory make such a good fucking duo. Like they, 
their their voices complement each other so well. I was like, they have to tour together. It, it's it's fucking given at this point. But <laughs> yeah, the song, <laughs> the song, the album has a lot of great moments, a lot of great sounds. And you know, if you're as open minded as I am, or at least I try to be, yes, please listen to this because it's so good. Um, number six, dark dark sun day seeker and that concludes my concludes album six through ten all right top five let's fucking go number five pain remains lorna shore everybody's fucking talking about lorna shore especially this year well, especially last year too, but yeah, 2021, 2022, the fucking year for Lorna Shore. Uh, I was very skeptical. I've been peeping them on the down low ever since to the Hellfire drop because, you know, I'm not huge on Deathcore. Like, I mean, you know, I, I, I did talk about Upon a Burning Body earlier. They're one of those metalcore, I mean, not metalcore, Deathcore for starters, bands. Cannot say the same for um, Lorna Shore. Like, eh. Here and there, I've been peeping them on a download just to get a, just to get a gist of like what their material is like. Uh, I wasn't too big on Tom Barber era, CJ McCreary era is good, but you know since Will almost joined the band, they've been kind of distancing themselves from their old material, especially in live performances. But Pain Remains, ah, oh! it's a fucking godsend. It is a gift from God. I don't know if that's complimentary to one another, but. It is a gift from God. It is a gift from the gods. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, Sun Eater, Into the Earth, the uh, the Pain Remains trilogy songs, those are great. However, I do not think any of these songs compare to the opening track, Welcome Back, Oh Sleeping Dreamer. Ah! Oh my God, it was so good. It was, it was too good. Like, that is probably the perfect way to open with an up and coming of age deathcore band not coming of age but like they they've been around for a bit but you know they're still growing they're still new they're still young and you know listening to this song and it's like ugh, they have completely reinvented themselves even if it's not the same members that were in the band when you know they first started who cares <laughs> but yeah oh my gosh and then my personal favorite track soulless existence it flows so perfectly like every song on this album complements each other at least for me it does so you know listening to it it's like therapy it's like having your muscles relaxed <laughs> that's the best way i can explain it but this is great I, I love it this is such a good album i i can't even i could go on and on but you know this this would turn from a 30 minute video to a three hour long video if i just went into how good this album was but you know what I'm just gonna leave you with this. Go listen to it. <laughs> Pain Remains, Luna Shore. Kicking off my top five of this top 10 list. Number four, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick Lamar. So yeah, I remember the rumors circulating that this was gonna be a double album and based off the title, they were right. It was a double album. It is a double album. It's, it's only a double disc. It's not, it wasn't being released separately because <laughs> I don't think they, I don't think he wanted to take that risk. First time I listened to this album, I thought to myself, this is art. This is art in its truest form. Yeah, some people say he peaked at Good Kid. Some people say he peaked at Temple Butterfly. Some people say he peaked at Damn. I don't think Kendrick Lamar has peaked. I think he's still going. And even if he does take longer and longer to put out an album with time, I still don't think he's peaked. And, and, it's, and it's just me because, you know, every song has a deeper meaning. Every, every, every newer song has a deeper meaning. The, the list of features is, is such a really nice touch. Like, you know, having Tana Lee on, on Mr. Morale, having Baby Keem on Savior. Speaking of which, I do personally think that Baby Keem influenced Kendrick a lot for this album because, I mean, everybody heard Family Ties. Everybody heard Range Rumors last... <laughs> Range Brothers. <laughs> Range Rumors. Range Brothers last year. And they thought to themselves, wow, this is great. <laughs> I won't... I, does this mean we're getting new Kendrick soon? And he he would go on later to confirm that he was working on his next album, which is his final with Top Dog Entertainment. But yeah, oh my gosh. Dude, this is art in its purest form. 
I cannot tell you how many times I've played Count Me Out. I can't tell you how many times I've played um, Die Hard. I fucking love Die Hard. I could probably cover that song if I memorized the lyrics and the flow to the minute detail. <laughs> I may actually do that, but don't hold me to it because I'm still, you know, debating if I want to do covers again. Yes. Oh my gosh. Honestly, if he gets cheated, if he gets cheated at the Grammys again, I'm gonna be pretty upset. I'm not gonna do anything about it because I don't fucking work for the Recording Academy. But I'm gonna be pretty upset. So, number four, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick Lamar. I'm gonna tell you why it's placed so low on the top five in the just a second. Number three, Don FM, The Weeknd. Oh my God, why would you place The Weeknd over Kendrick? Um, because Kendrick had Kodak Black on a song. That's literally why it's only lower than Don FM. I do not like Kodak Black. Anyways, so Don FM was, for the most part, for the most part, a surprise drop because everybody heard Take My Breath last year, which was for the Olympics. I think it was featured in the Olympics. But yeah, I thought Take My Breath was great. And I thought it was just going to be like a standalone single between um, After Hours and whatever he had planned next. It was not. It was part of Don FM, which dropped on the first fucking Friday of 2022. And <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I've played Don, I've played Don FM. Oh, I can't pick a favorite because I fucking love this entire album. It has been my therapy for about most of the year. <laughs> Woo. But yeah, oh my gosh. I played this song too. I played this album. I played the songs on it to death too, but this album, I've played it to death. Oh, and it flows so perfectly. The perfect concept album. It is a fucking radio station in the form of an album. And it flows so perfectly. And it's like, man, this take place in purgatory? I'm playing this shit in the club. I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> Holy shit, man. And then, oh my gosh. You remember when he he's, he rescheduled his After Hours tour? Twice? Three times? I'm pretty sure it was three times. And then ultimately he said, No, I'm going to cancel it. Make it a double album headliner in the stadiums. And I did go to that stadium tour. These songs hit so fucking differently live. Oh my god. Holy shit, man. Honestly, I think The weekend just never misses. I do not give a fuck if you think he has not been good since Beauty Behind the Madness or Kissland. Fuck you. This is great. All of his music is great. I love all of his music. I don't listen to Trilogy, but I know I know Trilogy has some hits. But ah, this is great. Ooh, it's it's literally like therapy. Like I mean, I I've already paid for the album, so technically speaking, it is my therapist. <laughs> But holy shit, and the fact that this is part of a trilogy, I don't know if it's beginning a new trilogy or if it's the second of the trilogy because he did tease that this is, this is you're witnessing a trilogy is what he pretty much said when he dropped Dawn FM or when he was teasing Dawn FM. But all I can say is whatever the next installment is, whether it's the second or third, I'm fucking ready because Dawn FM, I personally think is untouchable. And I cannot wait for whatever bizarre name he gets the next headline tour that has like all three album titles included. I'm scared, but at the same time, I'm very excited. Woo! Number three, Dawn FM, The Weeknd. Number two, The Death of Peace of Mind, Bad Omens. Why is this only number two? You know, this list is personal bias, but you already knew that. Usually when bands change, people are very skeptical and people are like, oh, I miss the old you. But to my surprise, when the Death of Peace of Mind released, everybody, even people outside of the alternative scene, even listeners outside of the alternative scene, were so on board with this album. And I was, I was amazed because, you know, like I said earlier, when bands change, people are just very skeptical. I thought the same would happen with Bad Omens, but... And it's not like forced appreciation, because I do feel like when um, Those Who Wish to Exist um, dropped by Architects, everybody was like, look, they've worked hard in the scene. Please, just, at least respect the direction they're going in. No. For a death of peace of mind, it came naturally. Even if there are some songs that are reminiscent of their old stuff, the best example I can think of is Artificial Suicide, which was another you know, pre-album single one of my favorites but this album in general i do feel like you know they are changing 
they are keeping some of their old sound. If they continue this balance, I think they can pull it off perfectly. And, you know, whatever the direction this band goes in, I'm on board. Because they have exploded in the scene since dropping this album. And personally, I think it's only going to get better for them. Whether they go back to their old sound or they continue to change, it really does not matter. I Don't Want the Money, it's a great song. The closing track, Miracle, such a great way to close the track. At least for, you know, metalcore going alternative type of route. But yeah, you know, this is... This is also, you know, Therapy Substitute album. <laughs> I should really stop using that. The, the, the least I can say is that, you know, if you're not sold on this review, that's okay. Because, I mean, you know, not everyone's going to be on board when the band changes. However, I have been proven wrong in that instance when this album dropped. So, number two, The Death of Peace of Mind, Bad Omens. So, before I go into this, let me do the usual drum roll. Number one, scoring the end of the world, motionless and white. Oh my god, this is so stereotypical. I saw this coming. I don't fucking care. This is a great album. I can't tell you how many times I've played it. I've said this a lot for a lot of the albums on this list, but it would not be my top 10 if I didn't have these albums on repeat. Yes, even the ones that I believe weren't the best of their careers, you know. But holy shit, scoring the end of the world. I had some, I had I had a friend, maybe a couple more that were like afraid that, oh no, this is a, this is a concept album. I don't know how I feel about that. It was not a concept album. And I was very glad to be proven wrong about that because holy shit, this is a great album. <laughs> but um, it, it is a great album. And, you know, personally, I think Motionless in White, even though they don't change very much, I mean, in some songs, they kind of go soft. They write like these, you know, heartfelt, heartbroken ballads, like, you know, Eternally Yours, Another Life, Masterpiece. So I was not big on Another Life. I think I've gotten to the point that I can comfortably listen to it now, but before, when it first dropped, I didn't like the meaning of it at first. And then I hear Masterpiece, and it really helped me appreciate these three songs to come together. Because, you know, one's about sharing a feeling, one's about losing the feeling, and then, you know, Masterpiece is about severing that feeling altogether. But the rest of this album, oh my god, Meltdown. Meltdown is my favorite opening track. One of my favorite opening tracks ever. Holy shit, man. Woo! I could name the entire fucking album on this. On my favorite songs of, you know, the album. Because it's so good. Meltdown. Werewolf. So catchy. Uh, Corpse Nation. My personal favorite. Slaughterhouse. Goes so fucking hard. The features that they have on this album. You know, Caleb Shomo. Brian Garris. Lindsay Schoolcraft. Mick Gordon. Dude. These are perfect. And the songs that they had these features for, even better. Holy shit. But, yeah, you know, I, um, just like with the rest of this list, I can't tell you how many times I've played this album. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've talked about how good it was. I've told my friends about it. I've, I have not told my family about it because we are never on the same page when it comes to music. However, this album, I believe is worth dying for. <laughs> I think it is and you know hearing some of these songs live has been great they haven't played many of them just because you know trinity of terror has been going on for most of the year which is fine but i personally think that this album's untouchable and i wholeheartedly believe that you know it's only gonna get better for motionless they continue to get popular their albums continue to chart higher and i think that's probably the best thing to happen for them because they're one of the biggest acts in the scene. I mean, some people can say otherwise. Some people can say they're corny. Some, I don't fucking care. They deserve it. They deserve the world plus more. And this album is very telling of this opinion. So, yeah. If you didn't know this before, this whole list is is just my personal preferences. This is not me telling you what albums you need to listen to. I just like doing this because I love talking music with my friends. And... On that note, if you stuck around to the end of the video, I very much appreciate it. I do apologize for, you know, not showing my face very much this year. I've had creative block, and then around the time 
that I was usually that I usually do the big sketch. It was just not a good time because, um, I, you know, I was in the process of buying a new place, moving, so my personal life pretty much interfered, and I just needed a break. So I was very happy I get to do this. I got to do this for you guys. Uh, do me a favor. Do not forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, because obviously I'm going to do more of these. And uh, enjoy your day.